Dzień dobry. Witam wszystkich bardzo serdecznie. Oh, sorry. Um, I was English. Uh, welcome, everyone. Um, I I'm happy to be the first speaker. I'm happy to be, you know, at ATI Pi in Warsaw. The last one was in 1975 here, the year I was born. And uh, well, now we're here, and I'm here to talk about um, FontLab 6. Um, so um, this is, you know, um, an ongoing project. We're shipping public preview builds for the Mac, and uh, very soon we'll be also shipping public preview builds for Windows. And I want to sort of bring you up to date with um, the um, new things that we've done in the recent months and also show some of you who haven't um, seen it perhaps already a couple of things uh, that we already presented, but um, um, it sort of gives a bigger picture. So um, I, we, this is our sort of, you know, our, our, our aim. This, is, this has always been um, our kind of motto, um, professional font making from start to finish. And I'll just start with a, with a small example of how FontLab 6 uh, will try to accomplish that. So this is, a, this is a vector drawing in Illustrator. It's just an alphabet drawn you know, in a different Bezier tool, um, as you can see. So I'm going to show a little clip so we can, if, you, if I copy this um, and paste it to the sketchboard, the sketchboard being kind of like a canvas where you can draw, sketch, place vector shapes and bitmap shapes. In preferences, I um, enable the OCR module and I place a couple of guidelines uh, on the sketchboard uh, to mark the baselines of the glyphs, and then the cap height of, of the glyphs. For the cap height to work, I named them starting with C. So I have um, six guidelines. I do shape, optically separate, and then I get um, the OCR module um, recognizes the shapes, so it already gives me names. Of course, it's not perfect, but it mostly works very nice. I select all the shapes, and I, since I have a new font open uh, that I just created, I say place named shapes, and boom, I have you know all the vector glyphs um, placed into the slots. If the slots didn't, if the recognition didn't work, like on the capital I because it's just a <coughs> rectangle, then I can give it a name and uh, place into the alphabet. And the auto spacing um, is being used as the sort of Start so it gives you some uh, some spacing, but of course you can you can edit it. But there I could you know generate a font right away uh, from from this process. Mm. So I this is you know this is of course you can start your type design project in a traditional way with a blank glyph um, a font map uh, or font window uh, and a certain encoding and start drawing right in font up six. But you can also bring in artwork that you've drawn elsewhere. Mm, and then, just you know, after I've done this, these are PostScript outlines. Um, I uh, can mm, I can uh, pick the TrueType hinting tool, and I can you know look at the real clear type preview even on a Mac. I can click on auto hint. And I get uh, true type commands, true type instructions, actually applied on PostScript outlines. I don't need to convert into quadratics. I can, but I can attach the true type commands uh, also to um, to PostScript Bezier outlines. And uh, this is compatible with the old true type hinting module, but um, but sort of more. Uh, more advanced and um, with integrated clear type and uh, monochrome rendering. So that's, that's sort of the start to end, right? That's effectively I could just start from Illustrator and really within um, a couple of minutes make a functional uh, font uh, that is even true type hinted if I so chose. Um, so um, this is, of course, FontLab 6 is a you know, big tool. 
Um, so one of the most important things that you uh, do in addition to drawing, spacing, is of course sort of managing the glyph um, complement, uh, the character set. Um, so we have a um, font window that is um, based on the old Font Lab Studio 5 font window, but with a number of, uh, a big number of improvements. So here I can, I can filter my glyph set um, using a number of different categories like code pages, Unicode character names, glyph names, uh, Unicode scripts, etc. I have on the left side the search history panel, so all these searches that I've done um, are uh, stored in the history so I can easily go back to them. And um, then I have these searches, I can drag them to my bookmark section and then they become uh, shared for future use um, across different uh, projects. So I can actually build up these little lookup tables. Now, you can see that I can switch between sort of showing and hiding the uh, all glyphs. So, and I can, uh, I can of course change the captions. I can, um, this is a character basically is a, is a mixture display. It shows you the Unicode ca character if the glyph corresponds to one or a glyph name. If it doesn't, it's quite clever. Um, on the side, on the right side, I have a table view of my uh, character set that is also dynamic. So depending on the caption that I choose, it shows different properties. It shows the metrics, it shows the Unicode categories, scripts, and uh, of course the metrics can work with expressions. Um, I, I'll show you a bit of that later on. And then, yeah, if I select um, a bunch of glyphs and uh, double click or click enter, I open the metrics slash glyph slash metrics window uh, or a tab, which um, serves two purposes. It has, it can be opened as a metrics tab or as a glyph uh, tab, which then kind of works like um, the old Font Lab Studio 5 glyph window and metrics window, but you can easily change context. You don't need to use the, you know, neighbors and all these things that's, you, that's, that's um, integrated. So you can open just one glyph and work like in Studio 5, or you can open multiple glyphs and navigate back and forth. Mm, now, when I start drawing, there's a bunch of different, in addition to the, the Bezier's and, uh, of course, true type quadratics, which now also are first class citizen in uh, Font Lab 6. So you can uh, use smooth point connections, uh, tangent points with true type quadratics and edit natively in them. And, of course, you can convert uh, back and forth. But in addition to the standard points, you know, nodes and handles, um, we have been hearing from different type designers. Um, there are some who actually really know the Bezier structure, the point structure, and are very, very comfortable working with them and sort of planning, you know, interpolating the Bezier curvature when they just see the BCP configuration. Uh, and that's all fine, but there's some who actually um, would love to focus on the shape, on the form, and the BCP configuration is sort of for them like an old paradigm. Beziers are great for describing a shape, but we thought maybe they're not the perfect um, tool always to, to draw, so we've tried to improve them a bit. So first of all, um, there is this concept, um, we have this functionality to balance the segments, you know, in, uh, it's not always um, a good idea, as Lukas de Groot um, says, but we can control the, ba uh, we can balance the, the proportions between BCP automatically using the Tuni lines, or we can change the tension of the curves easily, one by one, or uh, for all selected segments, or even for selected segments across multiple glyphs um, using keyboard or mouse. 
um, this is, you know, super fast. Uh, Eduardo Tuni was um, the Argentinian type designer, was the one who kind of suggested this, and this is why we called them Tuni lines. Um, these little, I always wondered why, you know, these two Bezier handles were disconnected. I always felt that there, there should be something, you know, there should be something, this third line that would connect them and make it functional. So, so we've done that. Um, and of course, we've, in addition to um, adding to, 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 to things like, well, that you can select multiple nodes, but you can also select multiple BCPs, uh, again, within one glyph or across many glyphs, um, there is also a lot of sort of tiny little improvement in how you work with nodes. For instance, the slide node functionality. I, I love this because I, I, you know, I usually think that the, that uh, when you're working on contrast, it would actually be so much better if you configure your points um, so that they're actually at the contrast uh, extremas, not in the geometrical extremas. And you can also extend uh, curves, Bezier curves, by just sliding. So it's Alt, Alt Command, I believe, and then you slide um, across the curve with minimal changes or no changes uh, of the form. Um, then we have a number of sort of more advanced contour operations. We have servant nodes, so you can, you can um, um, declare certain glyphs, sorry, certain nodes to be uh, interpolable permanently. So if you, if you move a couple of control nodes, key nodes, the one in the middle will interpolate. There is, of course, the nudge functionality, which, uh, well, many people have requested, and there's been some Python sort of tools to do that. And so in addition to just moving the nodes, you can also scale the BCPs, um, the, the, the Bezier handles proportionally using nudge, mm, but also, yeah, but also there, so this is, but also there's power nudge, which you toggle with a C key. And if you, you know, I'll show it again. Uh, just very briefly, so this is regular nudge. I just, I, you know, the node, the top nodes and bottom nodes stay in place. Mm, so you just change the tension while you're scaling, or power nudge, which sort of does very clever detection which nodes are should stay in place and which nodes can be interpolated. Uh, so you don't need to really do anything. You just hold, press and hold C, and you can, you know, the automation kicks in if it. Of course, sometimes it sort of doesn't really capture uh, the nodes that you really want to move or interpolate. So in some cases, you need to make little adjustments. But it's much quicker than you know doing it one by one. OK. Oh. Yeah, the C key. Um. And then um, when it comes to sort of more automated or, or more batch adjustments. There's, uh, we have a, a, um, a couple of other tools, um, the magnet tool and power guides, um, which sort of allows you to attach nodes to guidelines. And then uh, the ones that are attached, um, when you move the guideline, will follow. The ones that aren't attached will interpolate. So in this way, you can, uh, with very little work, you can add power, uh, power guides um, automatically and then uh, in places where it didn't detect them, add them with a magnet tool and then, for instance, produce a condensed version or extended version uh, much quicker, of course, with manual um, corrections afterwards. That's, you know, always it's, you know, FontLab 6 isn't supposed to replace you as a designer, but it's we've tried to kind of help you in places where the decisions that you want to take are fairly obvious but but laborious you know it takes a lot of clicking to actually achieve something simple that's way where we've tried to sort of uh, have a tool or have a, a better way to do it but of course 
It's still your eye and it's still your outlines. Um, a couple of other things when it comes to sort of the, the view or the, the tools that, um, that give you, that aid you in achieving consistency and precision. Um, different kinds of uh, snapping suggestions, um, stem snapping. Here, for instance, if you define standard stems and draw, FontLab 6 will try to um, you know, suggest, ah, that's, pr that's the distance that you've defined somewhere. So uh, if I move, that's where, where it probably, you may want to have this. Of course, you can turn these suggestions on and off. They work when it comes to snapping suggestions. They work, again, within one glyph, or if you turn off exclusive editing in the edit menu, they will work across all the glyphs that you see. So you can actually make adjustments and you know match some point configurations of a neighboring glyph, glyph very, very easily and quickly. Mm. Guidelines, um, super powerful guidelines we have. You know, font guidelines, they can be turned into auto measuring uh, guidelines. We can, you can measure using, you can use the um, the guideline tool, the meter tool, to create um, these permanently linked guidelines, um, link these short guidelines to nodes and then sort of have these readouts available, numerical readouts available uh, to you at all times. Mm. The guidelines are glyph guidelines and font guidelines, um, principally, but the font guidelines actually can be, um, can use uh, tags. So we have introduced this concept of tags. Every glyph, uh, you can assign multiple tags to it, just like little labels, like, you know, kind of like hashtags, but without the hash. And um, when you then um, assign the same, a certain tag like UC for uppercase to a font guideline or to an alignment zone, those will only appear in the uppercase glyphs or the glyphs that you've designated as UC. So you can kind of reduce the number of, you know, the, the amount of clutter. If you're working on a, on a big character set, you're working on an Arabic and a Latin and a Greek, you very often want completely different set of font guidelines or alignment zones for these scripts. So, it's, so with tags, it's, it's very easy to, uh, to manage that. Mm. There's a number of, um, again, automation and uh, things that sort of aid you with working with, with contours. So one of the things that um, actually my good friend Łukasz Dziedzic had uh, helped us develop along with some Polish mathematicians is um, the genius, the genius node, which is an G2, which is a dynamic G2 continuity implementation. So you can designate a node, a genius node, and then it will, um, it will maintain the G2 curvature mm, on that node regardless of the changes, uh, of the BCP configuration changes. Mm, we have an, uh, a very clever eraser, uh, which sort of, um, I didn't show it here very, very, uh, a lot of it, but the eraser tool, you can um, kind of smoothen portions of, of a path. Um, you can uh, delete um, nodes, all, either all nodes or BCPs, or with, I think, Alt uh, or Shift. I'm not sure right now. Uh, selected ones. So uh, with the selective erasing, um, it font up will try to keep the extremum nodes intact, so you can just paint over and kind of smoothen out. It will remove the, what it thinks are non-essential nodes, as for instance, after auto tracing, it's very handful. It will not just sort of start deleting everything, but try to keep the structure. Um, oh yeah, sorry. Smart corners is, uh, it's sort of like a, well, it's not a gimmick, but it's actually, it's a very powerful feature, but it's, it's sort of one of these more complicated um, additional levels on the plain Bezier editing. We have a couple of filters um, which 
which which sort of make a, a slightly more advanced contour that then in the end will be simplified when you when you when you export it. And smart corners are one. So um, you know if I have a corner and I uh, decide to add to turn them into smart corners, I can quickly produce rounded, dynamic rounded corners or uh, or ink traps. And uh, as you can see, I can still edit the, uh, the position of the actual corner and the roundness, uh, which is uh, which the distance, the radius, it can be customized with the blue dot. And the tension of that roundness can be set in the font info. Mm. So and then afterwards, you can apply the corners and turn them into you know, regular Bezier segments. Um, font audit, of course, has been a popular feature of Font Lab Studio 5. And uh, we've taken some uh, inspiration from the great module that Tal Lemming has uh, developed, Glyph Nanny. Uh, thank you, Tal. You're always uh, fantastic. And uh, he published it on an, under an open source license. And we have, um, so that we got inspired to improve the visualization of font audit. There's a number of additional tests, and the whole um, the whole UI is is just a bit, you know, more more clean and 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 uh, more expressive. So you sort of can see uh, the inconsistencies or potential problems quicker. But of course, it's always suggestions. You know, you can uh, the fixing. Uh, can sometimes uh, not do what you expect. It's automation, but still, handful for review. Mm. And then another filter that we've developed, um, a more advanced one, uh, which may be handy for prototyping, is the power brush. So this is a you know a, a center line uh, skeleton, and when I apply the power brush, I can actually. Um, I can actually, you know, get different calligraphic effects and sort of try out um, a certain structure. And then once I'm done, I can actually do um, optically separate and, um, you know, move these glyphs into the glyph slots. This is working on a sketchboard, so it's sort of uh, handier for prototyping. And, uh, you know, once, you, once you're happy with your prototype, you can start uh, you can start fine-tuning mm, using uh, traditional outline editing. We have a, um, you know, the pencil is just um, slightly more robust and, um, you know, doesn't generate a lot of um, extra points. Uh, the rapid tool is something that, well, um, I, for one, I, I've always felt not very comfortable with the uh, the sort of the illustrator of the Bezier pen. I know that many people are super proficient with it, so we have, of course, a, a, a very good Bezier pen. Mm, we've sort of looked at what FontLab did good, what Fontographer did good in terms of the Bezier pen, and also looked at uh, tiny little improvements. Um, uh, but the Rapid tool is sort of a, well, it's for rapid prototyping of contours. and. Uh, this is, I'll, I'll just see, show you how I trace this outline. It's basically click or double click, double click for smooth, click for straight. Uh, you get these sort of unified control point uh, handles where you can make little adjustments. Um, by default, the, the arcs that um, FontLab, the rapid tool generates, cor correspond to the tension parameter in font info. So you can sort of set the tension parameter to a certain value and then very quickly, you know, draw the contours very, 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 uh, very uh, robustly, make little adjustments in the rapid tool, and then, of course, fine tune in Bezier editing. It's just fast. Um, the pen tool, yeah, the pen tool is, I can't really. You can't see that, but I've actually put a little outline in the mask layer because otherwise I wouldn't be able to draw anything. I'm just, I'm just bad with the Bezier 
uh, pen, but of course it's there. Um, fill and scissors, this is sort of, again, these sort of more advanced live um, um, contours that give you sort of more power um, so you can decide with the fill um, and the scissors. Uh, you can sort of dissect your outlines and make it, uh, you know, declare which areas are supposed to be black and which uh, aren't supposed to be filled, but you still maintain the consistency of stroke. Uh, so you don't need to remove overlaps. You can still uh, get these, these effects and uh, make adjustments um, more easily. And then afterwards, uh, when you generate the font, of course, the overlaps will be removed and, uh, and you will get a, a regular outline. Or you can do it manually after you've sort of attuned the shape. Um, the better shapes, we call them shapes, these are sort of our implementation of components. Um, we've made, based on some feedback that we've received in the, in the, in the last months, we've made some adjustments so um, you can either work with the shapes just like you would do with regular components. So here I'm working uh, with them so that they're unlocked and therefore I can modify the same shape, clone shape, for the A, either in the A acute glyph or in the A glyph. But uh, now in, uh, in the most uh, current build you can, you can um, set a preference where editing of the, the outlines is only allowed in the core shape which is effectively would be in this case case the lowercase a because that's the glyph where that outline exists uh, in isolation as you know and in the a acute it's reference it's the same outline but it exists together with the acute acute outline so so with that preference uh, options and preferences basically the a acute would not allow you in-place editing. You would double-click, then you would get the A or the acute, and you would edit. So it would it behaves similarly to FontLab Studio 5. While if you disable that option, you have more of the freedom um, to work across uh, across the glyphs, um, and also you can unlock the shapes individually if they're shapes for. Um, things like serifs, and you actually really want to edit them uh, whenever they appear and sort of use this cloning. So it's very flexible. It's, you know, you can work the older, more traditional way, but you can also work um, in a more flexible way when you're using these cloning um, for more than just, uh, more than just components. Yes, we have unlimited layers. We um, we also uh, through the layers implementation we also implement uh, font va variations. So our basically our variation we call them variations because they're sort of conceptually now based on the old TrueType GX variations, um, or actually more specifically, they're fully compatible with Mutator Math, and uh, we have a a sort of C++ port of mutator math that Eric has, well, open sourced. Thank you, Eric. That's wonderful. So we can use the, the same, we can set up, use the same design spaces uh, with, you know, unlimited access and unlimited um, intermediate uh, masters. So this is, this is actually imported from the glyphs. So there are three masters and we can interpolate along the weight axis. Um, of course, if you open a multiple master VFB, you'll still get two axes with the masters at corners, just as you would in a MM space, design space, but you can add uh, masters anywhere. So, so we have this flexibility that, uh, well, people clearly mm, want. Uh, for metrics editing, mm, there's, we're still polishing, especially for kerning, we're still working on the actual user interface, um, in the keyboard shortcuts and how you uh, can, everything sort of is there in the back end, but the 
front and the, the UI for canning is kind of, uh, it's quite challenging to make a good one, I, let me say. So, so, so that bit is, so we're, we're gathering feedback and actually yesterday we had a great discussion with, with a couple of people. Um, but yeah, metrics in addition to, you know, um, right side bearing, left side bearing, we can add, we can use metrics expressions so we can, we can um, make references to other glyphs. So instead of in five, we, we would have this, uh, what was it called, metrics classes? Here it's by reference. So basically um, you can say the, you know, as you can see down below, the M, the left and right side bearing are um, supposed to be equal to H. Um, we can also build these uh, references automatically. So if I say um, link glyph metrics, this is a, a regular font. You can see that it just has, you know, side bearings numerically um, set up. And if, um, yep. If I choose link glyph metrics from the font window, yeah, I get, um, I actually get this ability to either, well, link them so that shapes uh, that are really identical on the left and right um, will be linked together. So, you know, N acute will get these, the, a link, a metric link to, that is equal to N. But also, um, you can subset the number, sort of enforce the number of glyphs that will be the key glyphs for the metrics linking. So in this case, for LSB, there's a, a small list of glyphs, but I could enter just H and O and increase the tolerance, and then all the glyph metrics that I have would be somehow linked to just N and O, plus or minus the number that is, that is there. So in this case, when I run this, oops, sorry, I'll just, yep. Um, I'll just show the result. Hmm. And now you can see that, for instance, the, you know, the C glyph uh, has the right side bearing of, uh, is linked to the right side, left side bearing of O minus six, because the original, you know, the, 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 the O was six units wider, the side bearing, than, the, than that of C, but they're optically similar, so they've been linked. So you can sort of, it can automatically build the formula not only by, you know, for identical, but also close uh, shapes, my, maintaining the, uh, the, the numerical relations. Um, Canning and anchors, as I said, the canning UI, this is an older slide, we're still working on it. Um, we have anchors that, of course, will be used to generate mark positioning and will be used to, um, to generate new glyphs if you, if you, if you set them. Um, well, this whole, the naming, you know, top and underscore top, bottom and underscore bottom, basically what we've, uh, developed in FontLab Studio 5 or even maybe older FontLab 4 or something and, and seems to be the standard that works but it's also possible to set more advanced numerical expressions so you can actually set the anchor positions to for instance in the vertical to be at a certain guideline say ascender plus 10 and then whenever you move that guideline all the anchors will follow. So you don't have to adjust the anchors one by one. You can uh, place them using expressions and then uh, link them to these expressions and then just use one font guideline to sort of adjust all the anchors in a certain uh, group of glyphs. And then, yeah, the, the last sort of bit, true type hinting, I've shown already some bits of it. I'll just, you know, I just, say that um, there's been a, um, a number of changes in the back end. So, so we have um, all the points 
in the true type hinting engine, the reference to the reference by names rather than point indices. So, so the so the commands are um, now editable as plain text. You can copy paste them, export them easily, um, and also, which I'm not showing here, the, this is this is you know all the information you know from the TTH engine in FontApp Studio 5 is here, just sort of slightly cleaned up and. Uh, yeah, we have the clear type preview and the, we don't yet have the grayscale preview because the renderer, well, we may talk to you guys or something, uh, but, uh, and the black and white preview. And um, we also have copy and paste special for true type commands. So you can copy uh, the commands, true type commands from one font and paste special them to a different design, a bold variant. And as far as possible, they will be translated and you know the points will be matched and even across the glyph so you can copy the true type commands from the o glyph and paste them into uppercase q and you know the the, the bits where the q uh, the, the 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 stroke is will be unhinted but the the other commands will will be transferred so much faster way to deal with uh with uh, true type hinting um so yeah, we have the public preview, and um, you know you can get it if you still haven't at fontapp.com/fl6. Enter the email, uh, your email address, and we'll get you'll get the download link. Far, uh, currently still for the Mac, but the Windows version is is very very uh, close. Mm, and yeah, that's that's it from me. Um, so I. Uh, yeah, if there's yeah, any quick questions. Quick questions. Anybody have any questions? Thanks a lot. Yeah.